In this video, we're going to look at how to calibrate a spectrum that was captured with a slit spectrometer. The first step is to open up our target spectrum, which in this case was Betelgeuse. There's the spectrum, and then we'll bracket it in with our orange lines. Once we've done that, we're ready to load our gas calibration tube spectrum, which we took before or after our actual target. There it is, and the orange lines are already in place so that we know exactly where in that spectrum we want to do our sampling. Over on the right, we can see that spectrum, and now we simply need to calibrate that neon spectrum. So we click on the Calibrate button, and we're going to use the nonlinear calibration here, although we'll just start with two points to get oriented. Now we need a reference so that we can actually identify which lines are which over on the right side. And we can see, for example, that high line is probably that one at 58.52, and this line here is probably this one over here. This may take a little trial and error to figure out which line is which, as we'll see in a moment, especially if you're using a higher resolution device where you're only seeing a small window rather than the full neon spectrum. But let's see how we calibrate here. It'll be the same regardless of the spectrometer type. We click on the first row in the pixel field, and now we need to enter the x-axis pixel value of that peak. Now, there's a variety of ways to do this more accurately, and we'll show you them in just a moment. But first, let's just click on that point and the software transferred that pixel value into the calibration window. Now we think that wavelength is 5852, so let's type that in over here, 5852. And now we'll do the same thing with a second point. Now knowing which point to choose, of course, depends on the resolution of your spectrometer and just how big a window into the spectrum you've got. In this case, let's zoom in here, and we'll do the same process. We'll enter the pixel value. You can see it got copied over here. And then the wavelength value, we think from the atlas, is 7032. So let's put that in. Now we're ready to calibrate. So I'll click Apply, and then I'll double click to zoom out. Let's get this out of the way. We can see we've now got angstroms in the x-axis. And let's bring up our element library and select down here, Neon. And now let's zoom in and take a look. Well, we can see there's a lot of correspondence there. So it looks like our first two points that we chose are correct, but there's also some inaccuracies still because we're just doing a two-point calibration here. By the way, on this screen, you might set line width a little high to two instead of one. It makes clicking on these lines a little easier, and we'll be doing more of that in just a moment. So now we need to fill in the gaps and enter a few additional points. Now again, what you would do here typically is just bracket the specific area that you're interested in working in. In this case, we're just going to start at the left end and enter a couple more points here. Let's just click on the approximate peak here. And then for the wavelength, since we have those element lines, we can just hover over them and click them. So now we've entered a wavelength and a pixel value. Let's do that again. We'll enter one more point. Let's come over here. And we'll click on that approximate peak. And then the wavelength. Now we've got four points. We can click Apply. And of course, we can add a few orders in our polynomial fit to do a little bit closer curve fitting. When we click Apply, let's zoom out and just bracket in an area. That looks like we've got a pretty good match. Let's zoom in a little more closely. And we can see that we really do have a good correspondence between our red data and the calibration lines. Now, of course, that's because this is the general region that we did our calibration in. The points that we're looking at here are the ones that are over here in the grid that we actually used in our calibration process. If we look over to the right over here, we can see things don't match up quite as well. So this illustrates the importance of calibrating in the region that you're going to be studying to carefully choose the points that you're going to calibrate against and to select your polynomial and your fit so that you get the best match you can. Now, one thing to show you here, let's zoom in once more, and that is if I click and put a check mark there, then each row that I select on the left here is highlighted by a yellow line on the right, and that can help you while you're going back and fine-tuning your data and adding additional points. Now, the points don't have to be added in wavelength order. You can put them into this grid in any order you wish. Now let's look at how we can more accurately select those pixel values. I'm going to come down to this measure lines field and turn the measure lines on by putting a checkbox right there. And then I'm going to drag the measure lines out. 
There we go. Now remember, if we hold the control key down while we're dragging our mouse, when we let go, the other line will snap to the symmetrically equal other side y-axis value. That can help us quickly bracket in a Gaussian feature like this. So the software is showing us that the Barry Center between those two measure lines is 607.5 pixels. And now what we could do is simply click in the cell into which we want to add that value, click on the pixel, and enter the wavelength. It's, again, just a shortcut so you don't have to manually type those values into the grid. If your spectrometer happens to be stable enough, then you can save this calibration and then from image to image or even night to night, use the load button rather than having to go through this calibration process on a gas tube. Once you've calibrated your gas tube reference spectrum, whether it's neon or whatever gas, and used enough points so that you're happy with the accuracy, then we reload the original data that we're studying, in this case, Betelgeuse. Now let's clean things up a little bit. I'll turn off the neon reference lines, and let's get rid of the measure lines over here. So now we've got a calibrated Betelgeuse spectrum, and there's a variety of things we can do. Of course, we can zoom in here, and holding the Control shift key down, we can read off wavelengths like that. The other thing we can do if we want, I just double-click to zoom out, let's open up in the reference library a type M star. And now when we compare our red data to the blue reference spectrum, we can see that the features roughly correspond, which gives us some confidence that we chose the proper starting points when we were calibrating on our neon gas tube spectrum. If we were using a higher resolution spectrometer, this confirmation step isn't as easy to do because, of course, on a higher resolution device, we're looking at such a small window into the full visible spectrum. So that's how you use RSpec to calibrate a slit spectrum.